Hello, back today with another matriarch video since that's really all any of you seem to care about. If you've been watching the channel lately, you know that I just upgraded my studio computer, been transferring software over, trying to get licenses straightened out, and just in general, I've been staring at computer screens for far too long. So I'm gonna cleanse my own palette today by doing a patch from scratch with the matriarch. And I wanted to focus on how to make generative ambient music with just the matriarch using no external modules, nothing for external modulation, just patching it within itself and seeing what we can come up with. So if that sounds interesting to you, grab a juice box, stick around, and uh, let's get into it. First thing I'm gonna do is record a sequence. I'm gonna just stick to the key of C because the sequencer is transposable, so it just makes the most sense. Okay, let's see what that sounds like when we play it back. And that's it. That's all you have to do to create generative... <laughs> no, I'm kidding. We're going to do more. So let's slow that right down. Let's switch it to random mode. So you can hear there's some tuning discrepancies here. That's actually not a bad thing. I am in uh, two voice paraphonic. I'll switch that over to four. Okay, I think what I want to do is modulate the rate of the ARP slash sequencer with one of these LFOs. And the first thing I'm going to do is set up kind of like a, a malt LFO. Uh, so I'm going to route that to an attenuator, which I'm then going to send to a utility malt so that I can send that multiple places. That way you're not limited to just having that LFO available for one patch point. So let's take wave out of here and go into an attenuator, our first attenuator here. Then let's take the output of that attenuator and go into our utility. Where are my cables? There we go. I'm just gonna make this uh, attenuator set it to 12 o'clock for now. And I'm gonna go out of that utility, which is just, again, multiplying our signal. Uh, and I'm going to go into the rate of our sequencer. Increase the rate of this. And it's not doing anything right now because the attenuator is set to 12 o'clock. So to add some positive attenuation to that, you should see our rate start to change. You see that? It's being affected by this LFO, which is set to a sine wave. So if I play my sequence again, Gonna make it a little bit more subtle by dialing back the attenuation. Could play with different rates of the LFO and see what that does to things. Different waveforms. Okay, I'm going to go back to a sine wave for our LFO because I want to modulate this modulator with something. So in order to do that, this is a mess. I want to take our other more simple LFO. It just has a try out and a square out. I'm going to mulch that just like we did before so that I have multiple instances of this LFO that I can send to multiple places. I'm going to send this triangle out once again into an attenuator so that I have control over the depth of that modulation. I need more of these short cables, I think. And I'm going to send the output of that to our second mult up here. Okay, now I need to get this signal over here attenuating... What was I doing? What was I going to attenuate? Oh yeah, let's do the amount, the CV amount of this attenuator. Thank you. 
I'll tell you what, I could also do something like this. Now this is gonna require something that you may or may not have, but something that is really useful, which is this stackable CV cable. And what that's going to allow me to do is malt a malt. So I'm coming out of this malt and I'm gonna send this signal over here, where was it? So that's doing exactly what it was doing before, but now I can also go from there and change the rate of this. Okay, so <laughs> real quick, let's walk through what we've done. We are sending, I'm gonna get confused here, I have no doubt. We're sending the wave out from this LFO to an attenuator, which we are then splitting into multiple signals that is going to our rate in of our sequencer. Then we have our second LFO, our simple LFO, the triangle out going into another attenuator, which we're splitting out to a malt. And then that is going to control the depth here and also the speed of this LFO. So everything is kind of affecting everything else, right? Okay, I'm really bored with the sound at this point, so why don't we change it up just a bit? Let's go... Okay, by increasing the attenuation, we can get some interesting things happening here. I'm going back to two voice paraphonic mode because I want to do some oscillator sync stuff over here. Let's sync oscillator three uh, to oscillator one. I think that's all that works. Because I've malted all of these signals, I have access to all of this crazy modulation going on. I still have two more outs here and two more outs here. So let's do something with that, shall we? I also still have another attenuator I haven't even used yet. Let me use a different cable for this. Okay, let's go, because this is our, it's kind of like our modulator wave. Uh, for the sync, uh, let's go uh, linear FM. And I know exactly what is going to make this instantly better. I'm going to increase the release time and turn on some of this wonderful delay. I have the delay unsynced because the rate is constantly changing. If we turn on the, the sync, you can hear that the rate of the delay is also being affected because we're modulating the rate of the ARP or the sequencer, which is kind of interesting, but maybe a little bit more avant-garde than we want for this patch. Okay, I'm gonna switch to the stereo filters which is going to give me control over the two filters on each of these two knobs. Give it some stereo width in addition to what the delay is doing. And... Well, it is really hot in here. I apologize for my shiny uh, forehead, but you're just going to have to learn to live with it. Okay, that's already pretty interesting to me. So... What if I took... I want to take the envelope. I could have probably done this in a way that was a little bit closer. I'm going to take the envelope to this attenuator. This is the filter envelope, by the way. Increase the attack. Oh yeah, we're, we're getting there now, aren't we? There it is. I want to do something to get these filters moving in just a minute too. But for now, let's stay on one thing at a time. Envelope is going out to... Really should have planned this cable management a little bit better. Filter envelope going out to the attenuator and let's go output of that to... Dare I?
As I've mentioned in some of my Matriarch patch notes before, which by the way, I'll have a link in the description where you can download some other ambient patches that I've made, the patch notes for those. Just switch your Paraphony switch from time to time. Depending on how you've patched it, that's going to lead to some really interesting results that you might not have expected. Not what you planned, but really, uh, yeah, different and interesting. Because of the way that the oscillators are interacting with one another. So now the filter envelope, I have it attenuating just a little bit of positive attenuation to the linear FM on this oscillator too. I love having when we have this like round robin thing going on with the paraphonic voices, I love having one that just kind of pops through the texture. So like a saw wave. And when it's hitting at random times, it can create some really interesting effects. Let's make it a square wave and add some pulse width. And that's hardwired or hard patched into the modulation knob. So you can hear that. Oh yeah. Nick Bat would be really proud. Could add a little noise. Oh yeah, okay. Now I mentioned I want to get these filters moving independently because when we do that... You can hear that stereo field, right? Sweeping around. But I don't want to do that by hand. I want to, I want to be able to walk away and listen to this for a few hours while I painstakingly try to get my iLock plugins to work. So what do we have left that we can draw from? I'm gonna take, since I do have... Because I molted my signal here, I have this available still. Let's plug it into cutoff 2. Now that is pretty extreme. I changed my mind. I'm going to take this one over here because the depth is not quite as extreme over here. Yeah, I'm not crazy about that. So, what do I have left that I can use? You know, I don't think this is really doing enough for me to warrant having it. So what I'm going to do instead, we can change our mind, that's allowed. What I'm going to do instead is take the noise out. Put that into this attenuator. Now I can use... <coughs> oh, sorry about that. Almost died. It's fine. So now I can take uh, the noise and use that as a modulation source. Let's go output into the filter. Oh yeah. Cable's too long, but you get the idea. You know what, that's gonna drive me crazy. Oh, don't forget what you were doing. Doesn't take much depth on that, right? Another cool thing to do um, from there would be, once again, you know what, I need to grab another cable. I think I have, yeah, I have another stackable cable. Don't, don't go away. Okay, all right. And we're back like nothing ever happened. I'm gonna take another stackable cable. Now this is the problem, I forgot what I was doing. Okay, here we go. And so that I can molt that noise out. This cable's a little too long, but You'll get the idea. Now I have uh, two more patch points that I can patch from. 
uh, that noise source. Because I want to go noise to delay time. Just a little bit of crunch. <laughs> so if you want this to become instant avant-garde, because we're modulating the sequencer rate uh, <laughs> in a crazy way, it's just throwing the delay times all over the place. You get this really bit reduced bucket brigade thing. Who is texting me right now? Oh, it's my wife. I like her, it's fine. Okay, so we are almost there, ladies and gentlemen. But I think the last thing I would like to do becomes a bit of a balancing act of all of these attenuators when you're using molts like this, but I think the last thing that I want to do is take this and send it to my feedback in. Stream, we go pitch in. Switch it over to paraphonic two. can try different waves of the LFOs, see what that does. It's affecting a lot of modulation, so with just a couple switches, you get some very different things. that delay feedback building up from the LFO. Just go full wet on the delay. Sounds incredible. We've got this LFO left to affect our... Too much. Let's just take it up here. Oh yeah. So if you're interested in more patches similar to this and their patch notes, you can check out uh, this video right here. I appreciate you watching. I would really appreciate it if you gave this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe if you want to see more stuff like this. I've really ramped up efforts on the channel this year and I really appreciate you hanging out. So uh, thanks and I'm just going to vibe out to this for a while. Have a good one.